Philadelphia sports fan, I've always felt a little overrated when it comes to his Eagles love. Um, I, I don't know. I've always felt that. And I worked in Philly, don't forget, 20 years ago, 30 years ago, uh, for a few months on, on the regulars on IP. Uh, I, I've always felt that they feel that they're, you know, the diehard, passionate football fan that nobody can match intensity-wise in, uh, in the NFL. And I think that's completely out of line and wrong. Uh, and uh, I, I don't, I did not realize, if they think, they're, how could you be over, how dumb can you be to be overconfident against Belichick and Brady? Uh, how is it, you, you can't be overconfident against those two. You want to be overconfident against somebody else, that's one thing. It is Brady and Belichick, who have been to seven Super Bowls. How can you be overconfident against that? Say, you know what, I think we got a good chance. Say like Eric did, if this worked right, we don't get a turnover, we get a turnover, we don't throw the ball away ourselves, we got a chance. But don't sit there and tell me that you think this is going to be a no-brainer. The Patriots can't run the ball. And that's asinine. John in Florida, he's on Mad Dog Unleashed. Johnny, good afternoon. How are you today? What do you have? Yes, sir. How you doing? I'm, uh, I was born and raised in Massachusetts. I left when I was 18. I called back home last night to talk to some friends of mine from childhood, and I asked them how they felt about uh, Brady's incident with the newspaper guy. And I, I agree with you. I agree with you. I'm not, a, I'm not a New England fan. I hate him. And he said, <laughs> he said, uh, well, I think he's fine. I said, but, you know, he could have handled it a different way, like what you said. And then my friend said, what do you mean a different way? I sense a violence in his voice that I hadn't heard from the time I stole his girlfriend when I was 16 years old. So I turned around and said, well, he should have just punched him in the mouth. And then he turned around and said to me, oh, okay, I thought you were going the other way. I'm not stupid. I got to go back up there sometime. I'm telling you, them fans up there, they're card-carrying members. You know what I'm saying? No, uh, you, you can't knock the Patriots. I mean, oh. they are a, I mean, if you knock Brady in any shape, way, or form, oh, you're man. a heathen. You, you're a you, heathen. You, My gosh. No, 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 no. That ain't just that. I was born and raised here. If I went up there and they knew that I was not a Patriots fan, I, I don't know if they let me in at home. Yeah, that's bad. Good call, John. I mean, and again, the Patriot fan's got a short memory because there's a lot of games in the uh, 60s and the 70s where they could care less about football. They were nowhere near the, they were, they were nowhere near the building. Um, and the Patriots were fourth in the city behind the Bruins, Celtics, and uh, Red Sox. Let's not forget that either. Uh, and, you know, the Patriot fan will be tested once Belichick and Brady leave. That's when the Patriot fan is going to be tested because this is never going to happen again with this combination. And Brady's not going to be there forever, nor is Belichick. And when they leave, they will be tested with their fandom. They'll be tested. You know, the first year or two after the two leave, you know, and they go 6-10, and ten, they, can, they can't say a word. But after that, three or four years down the road, uh, and, you know, they, they get a little tired of losing, and there's no hope on the horizon, we'll find out how loyal they are to the team. Ray Martell is the perfect example. He's our producer today. He's a Patriot fan. He's a, he's a, he's a come-by lately. When the Patriots, and he became a Patriot fan, remember, he's 30 years old. When the Patriots got good, he was 12, 13. He's never had that long rap, that long run of, uh, of, uh, of bad football. Yeah, doggy, I wish I, was, get, I wish I was just when 30. He, when he gets it, we'll see if Ray and the rest of you guys are as loyal as you seem to think that you are on a day-in, day-out basis. Here's Danny in Jersey. He's on Mad Dog Unleashed. Danny, good afternoon. How are you today? What do you have for me? Hey, Mad Dog. How you doing? Um, I, uh, again, I love the content. I bombed out on the second question, but, you know, I thought I got to call back and talk about this being in the South Jersey, like you mentioned. Um, I, I grew up loving the Eagles, but liking the Patriots, but they were never good at the same time. I'm going back to Steve Grogan, you know, Daryl Stanley way back then because I had family up in the area. But, so I keep, I've been following the Eagles for a long time, but it comes down to it, I kind of want the Patriots to win this. But, as, but the one caller touched on it, the other one, I missed the second guy, the, Patriot, the Eagles fans here think that they are going to roll through the Patriots because they think they're the equivalent of the Giants team that played them last time. Well, I can understand that. I mean, you know, they think they got a big defensive line, the backup quarterback. They make the comparison to the 90 Giants. I can understand that. Oh, yeah. No, actually, I almost kind of, I'm kind of believing them. You know, I, I, I don't feel like that. I, I, I think the underdog thing is, is more contrived now. I, I really do think that the Eagles are going to probably beat, beat the Patriots by a good amount. I feel like they do match up good against them. I'd hate to see it this one time around. And I don't know if this is a good tiebreaker. It's kind of, I don't want to straddle the fence. I mean, I, I kind of wish Wentz was there. For him to pull it off, I, I don't know. I don't feel. I don't feel great about a backup taking the dynasty down. I'd rather just see it. Let, let them wait another year for their time. 
Well, I, I think it's the, I think it's a, we, a good call. They, I think it's very strange that they've had this long dry spell, 60 years, and a guy who might end it is their backup quarterback who they couldn't wait to get rid of a couple years ago. That is weird. Yeah. And their savior is yeah. on the bench. Yeah. It, it is, yeah. uh, that is strange. They had a good call. That is strange from that perspective, that the person who might end the drought is Nick Foles, not Carson Wentz. 19 in front of the hour. Mad Dog Unleashed.